make it blue, and we'll make her dress red, and we'll just do that. Well, you can see the problems with all of these things. They just change what the director had intended, and it doesn't look right. And so this idea, this colorization never took off. Only a couple of films you can even find anymore that were colorized, the most famous of which are a couple of, um, of Christmas movies. A Miracle on 34th Street, you can still buy the black and white and color version, and It's a Wonderful Life, both Christmas films. And I think it's because they still are shown all the time, so you can get a color version of them if you want. The most interesting thing that colorization did was it prompted people to have such outrage that the government started to basically establish uh, a committee that would pick certain films that they deemed to be of, of important national importance, and those films became protected by the government, meaning that you could not alter them in any way. So some of the most famous films, if you wanted to colorize them, you couldn't because they are now protected. And that's because people started to think, realize uh, uh, these films as art forms, right, uh, that should be protected. So these pieces of art now are being protected by the government. And so colorization, in a weird way, brought that out. 3D, on the other hand, I, directors have had a choice in this. But like I mentioned before, not many films are actually created for 3D. We had a little run there, but a lot of the 3D films you see now are made in 2D and then transferred over into 3D. Um, in fact, I, I read an interview with the cinematographer for the new Blade Runner who said, yeah, the 3D looks okay, but I didn't make this film for 3D. I would go see it in 2D because he lit the whole film for 3D. And he said it very clearly, it's very muddy uh, in 3D. It's, again, it's not like Avatar where James Cameron designed every shot, all the look, to be in 3D, right? You could see it in 2D, but that was not the intention, okay? So in all of these cases, what we are thinking about is how it helps the director have more language to tell the story, right? And in what ways those things have been impacted. So it's, it's interesting because these all came in response to TV. They helped directors tremendously but at the same time, as technology advanced, some of these decisions were taken away from directors to re-show these films on television. It shows you just the, the incredible power of TV on all of these industries, particularly film.